so I'm Mike McClellan. I teach uh, eighth grade U.S. history at Castellaro Middle School in San Jose Unified. And my uh, seminar was Poetry in Public Life um, with the fantastic Paul Fry. And um, my unit was um, called Poetry in Notion, uh, the Hartford Wits and um, the Emergence of an American Identity. It all started uh, not last year, but the year before when I first got here to Yale and I uh, went for a walk in the Grove Street Cemetery and came across a gravesite of uh, a man named uh, David Humphreys, who had uh, ties to Yale. And uh, I was surprised to find um, from his, his grave marker that he was a, uh, a friend of George Washington's and a Revolutionary War figure. And I thought, well, I'm a colonial historian, and I've never heard of this guy. So is, is he just kind of someone in New Haven kind of hyping him up? Or is this guy a person of substance? Um, this year, then, when I started to do some research for my unit, um, I googled early American poets, and this guy's name came up. And I thought, is this the same guy? And sure enough, it was. And it turned out that he was um, part of a collection of poets um, called the Hartford Wits. Um, and they were very um, instrumental in, um, in uh, the Revolutionary War and, and kind of stirring up um, uh, public sentiment. So it looks like we're ready to go now. So um, here we go. So the seminar was kind of this intersection of poetry and the political side of life. Um, just talked about my unit a little bit. Um, and that is uh, David Humphrey's um, uh, gravesite. So um, the problem is, is that these Hartford Wits have been kind of um, forgotten by history. And so that really formed the, the, the basis of my, of my inquiry was how important were these gentlemen really? And more importantly then, why has history forgotten them? And what if we saw them as first as political activists um, rather than than artists rather than poets. So the content objectives, um, I follow a historical inquiry model in my class, which a lot of you are doing with focus questions and things like that. So um, kind of here's, here's how my unit uh, and my year plays out. There's a course level question that guides the entire year. And then each unit uh, nests into that with a unit focus question. So for the revolutionary unit, to what extent did limits on colonial freedoms uh, contribute to shaping an American identity? And then within the lesson, then a couple of questions that, that speak to that um, about England's taxation policies um, and leading to unrest in the colonies. And then um, how did the Hartford Whips kind of play into this? How did they help shape public opinion? So it aligns with Common Core and with our district um, standards as well. And the California Department of Education has also adopted this model for their uh, history and social studies um, framework. And now all teachers in California, all history teachers in California are supposed to be teaching to this model of these focus questions and, and uh, so on. So, um, what I love about it is that it requires so much more than just rote memorization of dates and places and names, but it really gets down into critical thinking where the kids have to do something with, um, with the, the evidence that they are analyzing. So they, um, with it being an open-ended question, they can always answer it in the positive or the negative. Yes, this was a good thing or no, this was not a good thing, but they back it up with lots of evidence. And the students have also said that they really love that, that that, you know, it, it takes on so much more meaning for them. So uh, again, central to my thesis, why um, was I surprised to discover these patriot poets? How important could they actually be? And it took on much more depth and importance when um, Michael had him uh, tap me on the shoulder and said, we have to talk. And, Turns out that he had just finished up his doctoral dissertation on the Hartford Wits. And so he was saying, I can't believe you found these guys. And 
So we sat down one day to talk uh, in the dining commons at lunch, and we were still there when the dinner crowd was coming in, and um, was really, really amazing, amazing um, work that, that Michael's done. Um, so uh, I found that the, the wits were just very, very important um, and relevant in their time. So again, why has history forgotten them? Well, I found out that uh, and what I wanted was for my students to know that these patriot poets were um, instrumental in um, public opinion and, and whatnot, um, just right there with Sam Adams and Paul Revere, but they didn't have um, you know, poets that were writing stories about them, like in Paul Revere's case, or uh, you know, kind of the public relations efforts and where the Sons of Liberty are, are um, remembered across history. So, what crime did they commit? Why did they, um, why have they been forgotten by history? Well, worst of all, to modern literary critics, they're boring. Um, <laughs> and they're boring because um, they were always, they, we always had this inferiority complex where we kind of suspected that we never quite measured up to England, that we were a bunch of toothless hillbillies. Um, and so, uh, in trying to produce something of cultural value, we, uh, the poets were writing in this um, mock epic style, um, which goes on and on. It kind of, as I said, uses iambic pentameter as a blunt force weapon. And uh, one, of, one of David Humphrey's poems um, closes out at just under 1,100 lines. And so I, just, I was showing my students on the document camera, it goes on and on and on. Um, and I won't bore you with that here. Um, but in a time that, that lacked movies and binge, binge watching and 24 hour news cycle and whatnot, that's what our, our founding fathers did for entertainment. Um, so um, when I saw them as political agitators, I was struck at how they were precursors to today's hip hop um, artists, uh, where they, um, in a very, very strong and defi defiant tone, a very um, insistent um, pattern to their writing. Um, and you know a message that points to the inadequacies of government and um, and the voice of the disenfranchised. And so, um, perhaps it's a little bit of going after the low-hanging fruit, but it was real easy to go from this and jump right into the success of of um, the Hamilton musical. And so, in the past, I've played. We've done some lyric studies in in previous years of them. And so, to kind of set up this whole unit, that's where we started. And I did have to frame the discussion a little bit with um, that there has been some, you know, artistic license taken with the, uh, the musical, but um, uh, anyways, the, the kids really connected with it. Um, the standards, you can see um, there, I've kind of already gone over those. So the prompt was they could do one of two things. Um, I decided that normally I would have them write like a historical inquiry or a, a historical inter interpretation, which is a couple paragraph um, essay. Uh, but this time, I really felt like they needed to write poetry. Um, even though it's a social studies class, they, they loved the idea. So they could either um, do an ode um, of praise or remembrance to the Hartford Wits, or they could comment on a number of social issues, um, whether it was the Las Vegas shootings, whether it was the anthem protests, whether it was the wildfires, hurricanes, and other um, natural disasters. And many chose to do more than one. They, they, wrote, they wrote on both sides, um, the Hartford Wits, and they wrote. I was, my fear was that I was going to have 99% you know, of them writing about um, hurricanes and firestorms in California, and no one was going to write on the Wits. But I was really, really happy to see that a lot of kids jumped in and wanted to write about the Wits and wanted to give them their proper place in history. So it had to follow these parameters, um, six stanzas. Each stanza had three lines uh, in this pattern, rhyming A, A, B. Um, so line one, four syllables, ends with one rhyme. Uh, the next line, four syllables, and ends, ends with that same rhyme. And then the third line, um, six syllables, and it ends with a different sound. So um, then I, I did this as an example to the students. I just kind of dashed this poem out. Uh, in days of old, at Yale, we're told, some soldiers armed with pens began to write with words that bite, taxation has to end. And though they wrote poems of note, 
that stirred patriot hearts. Today their fame no one can proclaim, for they're judged for their art. But, we can, but now we see with clarity, uh, important was their task to agitate and unite states. Was, uh, what more could we have asked? And so I went through that and I kind of modeled um, some of the, um, the thought process and the trying out different words and things like that so that the kids felt you know, freedom with that. Another one I did on a protest poem, Oh Say Can You See, Men on One Knee at Every Football Game. It's caused a stir, you can be sure, and some say that's their aim. But we must see equality demands to have its say. So play the game, but still proclaim, these wrongs just cannot stay. Since we're a land where every man should get to stand up tall, join you and me with liberty and justice for us all. And so when I was going through that, I played with some of the words. And so I told the students, first off, I wanted to say, um, equality demands to have its voice. And then I could play off of that maybe choice and things like that, but I really had a hard time making that work. So um, that really kick-started the kids' thinking and gave them freedom to play with different words and whatnot. And they really, really had, had a great time with it. Um, so here's some of my students getting to work on their poems. And Here's one, at Yale, some men armed with a pen, their poems destroy back. Men filmed with rage, all on one page, fairness the British lack. These words they fight with all their might, the Stamp Act has to end. We all unite to make things right, these laws we have to bend. We act as one till we are done fighting for liberty. The wit, these wits you see gave you and me none less than victory. So here's another one. I'll let you guys kind of take a look at that. What I learned also is I think next time around I'd like to have them provide maybe their rationale and kind of their inspiration. Because um, sometimes they assume that you know or that their audience knows what they're talking about and it's a little nebulous. As many things are in this middle school world. So. <laughs> so. Then, um, really quick, a lot of a common theme that students picked up on was the, uh, the Las Vegas shootings and um, you can just see a lot of, of concern um, and a lot of um, empathy in their voice. So, um, one bullet, one gun to end all fun, to cause all sorts of pain. One finger, one hand, please just stand, don't break the window pane. That was a common, a lot of kids were, um, those broken windows really affected them. One psycho night with tons of sight, honor all who died. Check the hotel, make sure to ring the bell, it's American pride. With all the death, take a deep breath, we mourn for all who died. Run back to back, hide in a shack, it's okay just to cry. And just to wrap things up, um, I think you've seen that we got hit pretty hard by firestorms in California, so that was a common theme as well. Um, and come on. So then I did a really quick recap just to see did my students get what I wanted them to get? Um, and I asked, who are the Hartford Wits? Why has history forgotten them? And what did they like and, and not like about this particular unit and the way it was taught? So who are the Hartford Wits? You can see that they really nailed it. What I wanted is them to come away with this group of men who uh, were poets early, early colonial times and that they were kind of the voice of the revolution. 
Uh, why have they been forgotten? Um, again, they, they got it pretty, pretty well. Their poems were long and boring. They wrote books, and, you know, so um, definitely a cautionary tale for all of us. And then tell me about your experience in writing the poems. What did you like and didn't like? A lot of the students, well, some of the students said that they would have liked to have had even more choice in what they wrote. And I reminded them that this was about poetry and public life, so I needed to, you know, um, give them some pretty tight parameters, but they really liked that they could write either about the Hartford Wits or about things that were on their minds socially. So, anyways, um, this is the, I'm, I've only taught the first part of the unit. I'll be teaching the second part when we get into the Constitution and can't wait to get after. I think it's going to be really, really um, well received. So, thank you.